Please stand. You say responsible for the salutation on page one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. You say the prayer of the Dear Heavenly Father, we pray you that you sent your Son to this earth for us, to us personally, that your Son was given not just to live here, although you did that, he did that, but he lived here perfectly and he died and rose again for us. Remember, he did that for us. And may that um, special and personal relationship be with us each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends in Christ, this Christmas you probably received several gifts from a spouse, a family member, or a dear friend that were just for you, that had your name on it. And maybe there was one gift that really touched your heart because it was so special and it was given in love. And possibly the giver of that gift constructed that gift or spent some extra time and effort in purchasing that gift. Whether the gift was a piece of jewelry, a painting, or a handmade ornament, it was priceless. The ultimate giver of gifts has given us a very special gift. In our theme verse for this Christmas service, the Lord expands on the description of a virgin son called Emmanuel. Isaiah declares, for to us a child was born. God gives his people a child, and he is the ultimate reason to be joyful. Not only a son was given, but to us, God's son was given. How can a child bring such great joy? Because it is not just any child that is born into the world. This child was special and unusual. And even though Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus was born, this prophecy gives us a clear and complete picture of our Savior and His work by providing vivid details that still bring, that we still treasure 2,000 years later. Many commentators can't believe that Isaiah could have offered such a clear picture of God's Son becoming a man. As Christians, we find comfort in God's grace, His undeserved love, that sent His Son so that we would believe in Him and have eternal life. This child will have the government on His shoulders. We will, he will have all power in heaven and uh, earth to govern, protect, sustain, and control everything. Jesus stated that He had such power. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Clearly, this doesn't refer to the worldly power of the Romans at Christ's time. For Christ declared to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Yet, Isaiah proclaims the deity of this child. Isaiah also calls this child a wonder. This child will be exceptional, a marvel, a miracle beyond what we may think or imagine. This child is true God and true man in one special, extraordinary person, a wonder and a miracle. We cannot fathom the mystery of how this same child could be the Almighty God and, and at the same time be a baby born of a virgin. We can only stand in awe of this miracle of God who came in human flesh to live with us and among us. Not only is this child wonderful, he is a counselor. He knows everything. His, great, he, it, his counsel is the grace of God whose plan rescues all people in the world from sin, death, and the devil. But the counsel of his word, the Messiah, has directed Christians throughout the centuries. If there is any doubt about this child, uh, whether this child is God, the title Mighty God dismisses it completely. Isaiah uses these same words in the next chapter to call him by this name again. 
a remnant will return to the mighty God, namely the God of Jacob. That verse refers to the Supreme Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Because this title is appropriate, attributed only to the true God, it leaves us no excuse for denying that the Messiah would not only be a child and a man, but the mighty God. This child is also called Everlasting Father, which refers to the work of this king and not his person. He continues to bear children as he leads people in faith to believe in him. Faith makes people God's children. The promise is by faith, so that it may be according to grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's descendants. This child always has the heart of a father who calls to us, his followers, tenderly, faithfully, and wisely. Finally, this child is called the Prince of Peace. Oh, how humanity has longed for peace throughout the centuries. Human peace will always be elusive, as even now war rages in Ukraine. As long as the world exists, there will be war, rumors of war, um, rebellion and conflict. The Messiah came to give us a different kind of peace, a spiritual peace. As Jesus stated, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let it be afraid. Christ's peace is united with his resurrection and his redeeming work. He appeased the justice of God which demanded payment for sin by offering himself as the atoning sacrifice. Through Jesus we are at peace with God. The Prince of Peace has restored peace with God. Jesus has removed what caused all rebellion, conflict, and war. Sin. Christ's peace is greater than anything we can imagine and beyond anything anyone else could ever attain. Wherever sin is present, perfect peace can't exist. We must await until Jesus returns and purges our sinful nature to experience perfect peace again. To us, God's Son is born, and by His suffering, death, and resurrection, He has declared the whole world righteous or holy in God's eyes. For Christ's blood cleanses us of all sin. Listen to God's word from Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The authority to rule will rest on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. The prophet Isaiah is known as the evangelist of the Old Testament. The 66th chapter book heralds the coming of Christ with many beautiful gospel promises. From the time that Adam and Eve fell into sin, God announced the coming of a Savior. In the years that follow, God appointed prophets or preachers to strengthen believers by reminding them of the Savior's coming. The descriptions that these prophets gave the people would help the people recognize the Savior when he came. The Holy Spirit inspired Isaiah to write about the person and work of Christ, who came to redeem us. Isaiah is even quoted in Matthew's Gospel. Throughout this service, we will hear clear hear passages from the book of Isaiah, blended with the accounts of Christ's birth from Matthew and Luke. May it give us a fuller picture of Christ and his work. Listen now to Christmas through Isaiah's eyes. We read, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. We continue by singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. At same 57, it's also on the screen. <coughs>
wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, when, who was with her, and he ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, what is, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between her, your offspring and her offspring. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Congregation is invited to sing the next hymn. Uh, the tune is a little different, but the words are <coughs> on page two.
important moment in the world. This was the first census that took place while Chironius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. I will make an everlasting covenant with my faithful love. Promise to David. To oh, Abba, a God for Jesse.
sing verse 1. Women are asked to sing verse 2, and we'll all sing verse 3.
At this time, we will have the Christmas offering. If you are a visitor, don't feel compelled to give. If you want to, that's up to you. Um, but at this time, we'll have the Christmas offering. time, I ask you to stand if you're able, if you're not, uh, that's okay. And we'll sing three verses of Joy to the World, uh, one, two, and four, and it's also on the screen.
festive spirit to celebrate the wonders of your holy birth. We confess that all the words that we speak and sing to your glory this day fall short of the praise we sinners owe you, our God, who left your throne in heaven to appear here in lowliness as our sight, Savior. A stable was your first home, a manger your first bed. Yet for our sakes you endured far deeper humiliation than this, for you came to bear the cross, the shame, the suffering, and even the death which we sinners deserve for our sins. Bless our children, that they may remain faithful to you throughout their lives, ever adoring you as Lord and King, ever trusting you as their Savior, and even serving you as their loving Master. Keep us all in the faith and direct our footsteps from day to day with the light of your love and truth that shines so brightly in our hearts. In your mercy, beam the gospel of salvation to every nation and people. Convert the hearts of sinners everywhere that they may rejoice with us at your birth and find comfort in the sacrifice you made for sinners on the cross. Tonight, we also pray, dear Heavenly Father, you control everything and in your hands are life and death. Remind the families of Mary Gaines, Donna's mother-in-law, Eric Pratt, the second son of Keith and Carol Pratt, and Judy Glynn, the mother of Scott, Mike, and Jonathan, of your love for them. You fashioned Mary, Eric, and Judy in their mother's womb. You gave them loving parents. You provided them with food and water. You blessed them with marriages and children. And now you have determined that their days on earth should be completed. With your help, they have fought the good fight of faith and have now received their everlasting crown of life. Through your son's sacrifice on the cross and his victorious resurrection, you have prepared a room for them in the mansions of heaven. We pray also for those who can't be with us today. May June Rowe, Joan Huffman, Keith and Carol Pratt, and Charles Vicker. We long to join them uh, in the mansions of heaven. Help us remain faithful and devoted to you as we continue to believe and let our faith shine with your glory. Amen. We join together in saying the Lord's Prayer on page 5. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and take care of you. The Lord uh, look up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen. We continue by singing Silent Night, uh, the first verse is in German, and yes, it is in and um, then we'll sing the other three verses in English. <laughs>
leave. If you don't, uh, if you want to, that, that's okay. Uh, leaving it in the queue is fine too. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you. Um, by the list of people that are there on page six, it takes a lot of a lot of people to um, put on or to carry out a worship service. Um, uh, like this and so we thank the Sunday School staff uh, that's the people listed there specifically Connie Tish for being our youth ministry coordinator and um, our organist Marlene for playing tonight, today all of it um, we thank you so much uh, Karen for being the inter instrumentalist on the clarinet and uh, we could go on and on uh, for those of, of you uh, that might have loved ones that couldn't be here today, it is being recorded, so it will be um, on our website. From there, you can get if you follow the directions, you can get to the YouTube uh, the to to get uh, to see to view that. So um, the deacons will meet uh, Tuesday at, at six, and the church council at seven. Um, Maybe I, I spoke too soon about communion. Uh, today there wasn't because of this. Uh, it's possible we could have it next Sunday, but then our regular Sunday for having communion is, will be January 15th. Uh, Christian education with uh, Sunday school and Bible study will resume next Sunday at 9 p.m. Uh, Christian memorial service has been being planned for Monday, January 16th for, the, uh, for Judy Glenn. Uh, at 11 p.m. That's when the service actually starts. If you uh, go on online to uh, Cassidy Mitchell Funeral Home, you'll see that there is. Uh, the family will receive visitation from 10 to 11 uh, uh, as well. Don't forget to check your mail boxes this time of year for church and newsletter cards and reports. Um, today, you can take the flowers home, right, uh, if yeah. you want to. Um, but um, Saturday, they'd like your help to take down the tree uh, and those decorations. Um, the quarterly meeting is there. You can you can uh, do that for yourself. Are we doing a luncheon for Judy? Are we doing a luncheon for Judy? Or do we need to get with Scott? Yeah. Um, I hope so. Okay. That's all I can say. This time, Pastor, we'd like to present you with a Christmas gift for the late Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to you, Karen, and thank you for all you do. Marlene, Merry thank Christmas, you. Happy New Year, thank you. Happy New Year. On behalf of my wife, Karen, and I, we wish you a very happy New Year, and may you grow in your faith and your love for your Lord.